Hello everyone. Today we are going to analyze this frame using Kani's method. Before analyzing, let us see the frame one time. In this frame, there are two columns, column AB and column CD. Also, there is a beam BC. In the columns, there are no loads. In the beam BC, there is uniformly distributed load 9 kN per meter. It is acting for the full span. The height of the columns is 4 meter. Length of the beam is also 4 meter. This frame is a non sway type frame because we have symmetrical loading and symmetrical dimensions. Now let us find the fixed end moments. In the columns AB and CD, there are no loads. So the fixed end moments M of AB, M of BA, M of CD and M of DC are 0. Now let us find the fixed end moments in the beam BC. In the beam BC, there is UDL. 9 kN per meter, it is acting for the full span. The formulas for the fixed end moments are minus WL square upon 12 and positive WL square upon 12. Here W is 9, L is 4. When we apply the values inside the formulas, we are getting M of BC and M of CB. In the Kani's method, we have to find the rotation factor. To find the rotation factor, we have to calculate the stiffness. Let us see the formulas to find the stiffness. If the fair end is fixed, the formula is 4EA upon L. If the fair end is hinged or with roller support, the formula is 3EA upon L. If the fair end is continuous, the formula is 4EA upon L. In this analysis, we are going to take the advantage of the symmetry of the frame. In the beam BC, in the center, let us split the frame into two parts. We are going to use the left side of the frame. From the joint B, we have to find the stiffness. First, let us find the stiffness for BA. For that, from the joint B, we have to look at the point A. In the point A, there is a fixed support. If the fair end is fixed, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BA is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BA, we are getting EI. Before finding the stiffness for BE, we have to find the stiffness for BC. To find the stiffness for BC, from the point B, we have to look at the point C. The point C is continuous. If the fair end is continuous, the formula for the stiffness is 4EA upon L. Length of BC is 4. Let us apply that. Finally, for the stiffness of BC, we are getting EI. To find the stiffness of BE, we have to divide the stiffness of BC by 2. When we do that, we are getting 0.5 EI. Now let us find sigma k. For that we have to add these two values. After adding we are getting 1.5 EI. Now let us find the rotation factor. The formula is minus 1 upon 2 into k upon sigma k. We have calculated the k and sigma k values. Using the formula we can find the rotation factors. In the joint B, we have to make a box like this. Now let us enter the fixed end moments. M of AB is equal to 0. M of BA is also equal to 0. M of BC is minus 12. 
in the joint B, we have to add these two fixed end moments. After adding, we are getting minus 12. Now let us enter the rotation factors. For BA, the rotation factor is minus 1 upon 3. And for BE, the rotation factor is minus 1 upon 6. In the joint B, we have to find two rotation contributions, M dash BA and M dash BE. The formula to find the rotation contribution is summation of rotation contributions at fair end plus summation of fixed end movements into rotation factor. Let us find M dash BA. M dash BA is located in the joint B. For the joint B, the fair ends are the point A and the point E. In the point A, we have a fixed support. In the fixed support, the rotation contribution will be always 0. In the point E also, the rotation contribution initially will be 0. So, for the summation of rotation contributions at a fair end, we have 0 plus 0. The summation of fixed end movement is minus 12. The rotation factor for BA is minus 1 upon 3. After the calculation, we are getting M dash BA which is equal to 4. For M dash BA and M dash BE, in the formula, all of the values will be same except the rotation factor. The rotation factor for BE is minus 1 upon 6. After the calculation for M dash BE, we are getting 2. Let us apply the values of M dash BA and M dash BE. In this analysis, only one iteration is enough. Now let us make the table and find the final movements. The formula to find the final movements is fixed end movement plus 2 into rotation contribution at a near end plus rotation contribution at a fair end. In the table, first let us enter all of the members. Then let us enter the fixed end movements. Then let us enter 2 into near end contributions. For AB, the near end contribution is 0. So 2 into 0. For BA, the near end contribution is 4. So 2 into 4. For BE, the near end contribution is 2. So 2 into 2. For AB, the fair end is BA. In BA, the contribution is 4. For BA, the fair end is AB. In AB, the contribution is 0. For BE, the fair end is EB. In EB, the contribution is 0. Now, let us add these two values. After adding, we are getting final movements. MAB is equal to 4 kNm. MBA is equal to 8 kNm. The movement in BE can be taken as MBC, which is equal to minus 8 kNm. Now we can find the remaining movements MTC, MCD and MCB. For MAB, we have got a positive value that means it is acting in the clockwise direction. So MTC should be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. The value will be same but we have to apply as negative because MTC is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. For MBA, we have got a positive value that means it is acting in the clockwise direction. So MCD should be acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So we have to apply this as negative here. For MBC, we have got a negative value that means it is acting in the anti-clockwise direction. So MCB should be acting in the clockwise direction. So the value should be positive. Now let us find the reactions. First let us find them in the column AB. When we take movement about B, we will get HA. By applying this rule, 
we will get HB. Now let us find the reactions in the beam BC. Since it is having the symmetrical loading, we can easily find VB and VC. For that, we have to multiply the UDL with the distance and then divide by 2. When we do that, we are getting VB and VC. Now, let us find the reactions in the column CD. When we take moment about D, we will get HC. By applying this rule, we will get HD. Using the loads and reactions, we can draw the shear force diagram. Using this formula, we can draw the free movement diagram. Using the direction of the movements, we can draw the end movement diagram. Then we can combine both of them so that we will get the bending movement diagram.